we will take this opportunity to um, talk a little about these three uh, priceless treasures of uh, among the many treasures india has the three priceless ones that um, has really helped shape the kaivalya yoga gurukulam as a concept because i get often asked a question so what is kyg are you a yoga teaching school because people think yoga is just about asanas and exercises so do you teach only yoga or do you play games or what is it that you do you seem to be all over the place so what is kyvalya all about so kyvalya yoga gurukulam has is basically stands for living a complete life it's a complete self empowerment a completely fulfilled life where we um, we cater to all aspects of the body the mind and the spirit and like all philosophical thoughts all lifestyles all belief systems there is always something that guides that right you have a guru you have a, a book a guru a teacher an avatar uh, a god if you will or somebody who has guided that or shaped that thought uh, in all our cases who are here today and in many people who are perhaps watching this video at kyg is that we have bhagwan sri satya sai baba has been our guru okay so the last 40 years i anything that shaped my thoughts has been him and there's no nothing else other than him and it is through him that i have learned to understand the treasures of india the meaning behind rituals and the the essence of the vedas and what how universal they are in approach it's not one religion as opposed to somebody else versus this it is the mother of all religions so how can it be a mother when it doesn't unify everything so it it actually contains in its bosom the teachings of all religions of all teachers and all spirituality because this is one of the earliest uh, known systems of philosophy of man where man reached beyond food drink and procreation and all of that he thought there is something more in life what is it that's what is recorded in the vedas correct so and the lifestyle was fashioned after that the vedic civilization that perhaps is almost prehistoric today because we don't have history to say what it was other than what we get from writings are a life life which was designed in that where life, everybody lived a life of full self empowerment and self actualization was the goal of life so it is in that context that kaivalya yoga curriculum has these three books which will which has shaped what this all about so kaivalya yoga and gurukulam has three words kaivalya is the state of oneness it is the highest philosophical state which is the essence of the vedas patanjali maharishi brought this he culled the essence of the upanishads he said from this i am going to take treasures because upanishads and vedanta is a treasure where you you can not learn to make a rocket you can learn to cure a disease you can learn about the self every every aspect of knowledge is covered there, right that's why you have chemistry trigonometry mathematics history geography everything is in the vedas already recorded yogena chittasya padena vacham मलम शरीर वैद्यकोपाकुत प्रवर मुनीना पतंजलि प्राजलिराणतोस्तंजलि बिकम्स वन ऑफ द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट गाइडिंग प्रिंसिपल्स so the word kaivalya is associated when i get the word kaivalya i take it from yoga sutras where the yoga sutras is divided into four parts the first part is samadhi pada 
Pada means one, one portion. So, quarter. So, the first quarter is devoted or first chapter is devoted to Samadhi. What is Samadhi? What is the philosophical basis for Samadhi? That is explained. Then the Sadhana Pada. Sadhana is what are the means to attain that Samadhi? What are the practices that you can do? So, that is explained in the Sadhana Pada, where we come across Yama, Niyama, Asana, Pranayama, all that is explained in the Sadhana Pada. Then the third Pada is the Vibhuti Pada. Vibhuti is what are the experiences that you will get? Patanjali says you can train through the sadhana pada, you can train your body to become very light, very young and all of that. He talks about so many things. And then comes the fourth which is called Kaivalya pada. He says ultimately where does all this end? Where does all your spiritual practices end? It is t- ends in Kaivalya. All our spiritual practices, no matter what we do, where we go, which God we worship, which religion we follow, it really doesn't matter as long as we end in that Kaivalya. Kaivalya is a state of oneness, where there is only one consciousness that has become all of this. There is no other. You and I are actually not different. You and I are part of one being. So Yoga Sutras of Patanjali to me brings that state of Kaivalya into something that can actually be aimed for in life. We know we aim for a better job, better career, better family, better home, better car. Why not also put Kaivalya in that list, bucket list? That is the kind of idea. So, Yoga Sutra of Patanjali guides the Kaivalya. Now, in order to understand that Yoga Sutra, because there's only 186 sutras, there is so much of Upanishads that is culled into that. So, you take the next step, you say, if Yoga is the means to attain Kaivalya, Kaivalya Yoga Gurukulam, Yoga is broadly a means to attain Kaivalya. When we talk of yoga today, yoga is broadly, generally understood as asanas, which is good. But that is one tiny portion of what yoga is. Yoga is whatever we do, do we have that sense of oneness in our lifestyle. Now, Patanjali in Kaivalya Marga, he has talked about only spiritual practices, right? But here, the word yoga has to be broadly understood. How do we expand that meaning of yoga? There is no other better book for us than the Bhagavad Gita. Gita Radhanam Shubhadini Svikritam Pitam Baradhari Gito Padesi The Bhagavad Gita, every chapter, 18 chapters, and every chapter is a yoga. Arjuna is depressed. The first chapter he talks about, I am depressed, I don't want all this war, I am confused, this, that. That is also a yoga, Arjuna Vishada yoga. Then Krishna talks in the second chapter and explains the highest wisdom, Sankhya yoga. Every chapter is, in other words, every aspect of our life, every thought process that we entertain, every action, all can and should culminate in as a yoga brings us to that state of Kaivalya. So yoga is therefore and only then can be a means to attain oneness. Just because we do asanas or we become flexible, it it is not necessarily going to take to oneness. It keeps your body healthy and therefore it's a very important portion of health and health in turn prepares the ground, right? But just tilling the ground is not going to make the, the agricultural crops come up. You have to plant the seeds, nurture it, grow it and take care of it. That is what Bhagavad Gita does. It, it caters to the mind and the spirit helps us understand this philosophy in a much larger sense because it is a dialogue between Arjuna and Krishna. Arjuna is surrendered to Krishna but nevertheless he asks questions. He says, no, but you said this, what do I do here? What do I do there? And therefore, he is our voice, your voice and my voice. In Yoga Sutras, we don't see that. There's no dialogues there. This string of pearls, Patanjali has thrown it for us to uh, understand, interpret. But Bhagavad Gita is a direct interaction between a devotee and God and devotee asks question, how do I practice this? What do I do? And therefore, understanding of the Bhagavad Gita, learning of the Bhagavad Gita is a um, very fundamental necessity for spiritual progress. Shreyo Hignanam Abhyasat Jnana Dhyanam Vishishyate Dhyanat Karma Palat Tyagas Tyaga Chantiranantaram So now that we understood this philosophical basis, how do we now live everyday life?
Ramayana. Ramayana means not story of Rama. Ayana means path. Like you have Uttarayana, Dakshinayana. What does that mean? Uttarayana means the path of the sun towards the north. Dakshinayana, the path of the sun as it transits. Like you have the northern and southern transit of the sun. So Ayana means a path. So this is the way the story is told us. This is the path of Rama. Follow the path of Rama. It's very simple. So at any stage in our lives, it's easy for us to say, what do I do now here? All of we had asked ourselves, what did Rama do? And then it will become easy for us to follow that path. So implementing values in everyday life comes from Ramayana. Implementing, we learn it from the lives of the great gurus, the masters, the life of Jesus Christ, the life of Sai, the life of Rama. We learn that. In fact, the very first chapter starts where Valmiki asks Narada, do you know of any person who has these, 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 these qualities? And he lists about 16 qualities. I want to know if there is somebody with all of this, who is not only just good looking, but who has got great qualities, who is fierce in uh, war and who is also very Shantam. He brings all polarities, right? We expect peaceful people to be peaceful at all times. He says, no, I want somebody who is very self-controlled and all that. Jatendriya, but I also want somebody whom, whom even the gods will fear in the battle. He gets so much anger that even gods will fear in the battle. So he brings all that. He said, do you know of anybody like this? Then Narada tells him, yes, I know of a king like this. His name is Rama from Ishwaku dynasty. And then he lists. So the entire Ramayana is based on that call. Right in the beginning, they say these are the qualities. So. It's a very beautiful epic. Even Baba himself has written Ramakatha Rasavahini in, in so much more detail. My hope is to not just teach it, but allow KYG's principles, programs and everything that we do to evolve around these books. That helps us to maintain the scope of what we want to do. How do we sanctify our lives? What is the philosophy that I, I adopt? What is my innermost core belief? The Yoga Sutras, the Kaivalya becomes my innermost core belief. And my mind constantly revolves around the philosophical thoughts of that presented in the Gita. The back and forth dialogues that I can have with myself, understanding it more in detail. And then how do I implement that in my everyday life? How do I become a Rama? To me, every avatar, every teacher walks the earth to set an example. And we worship him and that's, there's nothing wrong in worshipping him. But that worshipping him is an incomplete part of the e equation. You worship them, but then you also implement their teachings in our way. I can worship this Gita. I can beautifully sing the Gita. But if I don't understand what I'm doing and I don't implement that in my everyday life, then there is no point in doing this, right? So the idea is how do we then not only treasure them, revere them, place them at the highest uh, uh, pinnacle of our study. But then how do we also bring in, at least make an effort in the direction of bringing it into everyday practice. Then we have a complete holistic body, healthy body, a healthy mind, a healthy spirit. And then our future generations, our children will look up to say, these are the people I want to follow because they live their life fully. Because we become embodiments of self-empowerment, self-confidence, self-realization, self-actualization, correct? And so it is with that humble effort that I came across these very beautiful collections. They are signature collections. Uh, to me, they are going to be priceless. We are going to build an altar for them and keep them at this point just to show that this is... To me, symbolism is very important. Just like we have the Shiva Lingam that represents the Kaivalya. We call it Shiva Lingam is because Shiva is auspiciousness. Mm -hmm. And that contains Brahma, Vishnu and Rudram. All the three aspects are merged into that one being. A symbol like this helps us stay grounded and say this from this basis I want to go. Even a tree is like that. Right? You have a roots of the tree that keeps it grounded. Then the tree grows beautifully in all directions. But there is some part of it which is grounded. So what is ground? What are the grounding books of KYG? They are the Yoga Sutras of Patanjali, the Bhagavad Gita and the Adi Kavya, the, the first poem ever written. The Ramayana. I'm of course going to open these books and also 
uh, we are going to study it and read it. But this is a very beautiful collection. So thank you all for being here. Thank you for being a part of uh, KYG and, and this uh, very small ceremony. But nevertheless, I wanted this to be a chronicled in the history of KYG. So thank you. Sai Ram. Ram, Ram.